you know it's been cold when you start taking your jacket off at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Probably around 32. Stuff is just starting to melt. So, yeah, from 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit feels, feels warm. You know it's been cold. Ah, oh, man, I knew they would leak. That makes actually pretty good. Oh, that ain't gonna pick up out here. You have to walk over here. Out of nails. Surprise, surprise, <laughs> the gutter's leaking. If one thing will make gutters leak, it's ice. I can, get, I can fix that so the weather gets better. I don't see it leaking from some of it's from the others, but I'm sure, I'm sure they are, or they will. When you get one that's real close, man, the old hand plane really comes in handy. Better than going to the table saw. These gloves I mentioned last week, these cut protection gloves, I think they saved my my knuckle from this hand plane doing this right here. Got over into it twice. You'd think I'd have learned the first time. But I didn't. This works great. It takes off a good even strip, the whole length of the shingle. A little more for clearance. Pretty good. That one was pre-split. Nice of them to save me the uh, effort. It's starting to get too dark. Can't hardly see my line. That's not a good one either. Every once in a while, you get a box that has a few bad ones in it. But it's a wood product. There's going to be some bad ones. That's enough for tonight. Made good progress to get you a shot of it.
So I'd like to get a little bit closer to finished than what I am right now on my air system in here. And I wanna get this thing out of the shop and on the little concrete pad that we poured out back a few weeks ago. But before I can move this outside, I need to drill a hole through the wall so we can plumb in from our blue air line here through the wall to the compressor. I also need to hang my air or water separator. And I wanna hang a hose reel out at the front of the shop as well. So we got some plumbing that we need to do. I wanna break from shingling. So let's get started doing that and then we'll see what else we can get into. So here is the outlet of the tank and from the concrete pad it is 27 and a half inches to the center of the outlet here. But because we're going to be setting this compressor on some three quarter inch thick rubber feet basically to isolate any vibrations that'll raise it up obviously three quarters. So that would be what 28 and a quarter. So let's go drill our hole through the wall, center of the pad, 28 and a quarter inches off of the pad. So inch is what we're gonna be drilling because it's the largest bit that I have, which should be enough to get our blue air line through the wall. At least that's what I'm hoping anyway. We can always go a little bigger um, with the chisel if we have to. So it's quickly getting dark out here. You can see I've got the wall marked here, center of the pad, which turned out really nice, by the way. 28 and a quarter inches off the pad. We're obviously gonna drill all the way through. Our air line will come out and connect directly to the compressor that's gonna sit here. So is that going to fit through there? No. Hm. I had to chip it out a bit. All right. That worked just fine. I opened it up a little bit with that drill. It didn't make the prettiest hole coming out on this side. I'll put a bezel or something over that. You'll never see it. So here's a look at the water separator that I'm going to be putting on the wall. I don't have a bracket for it, so that's what the aluminum for is for. It's just a quick, quick mounting bracket so I can hook it to the wall. Let me show you this separator in a little better detail. I want to put some uh, grease on some of the O-rings and stuff on it anyway. So we'll tear it down and look at it real quick. So there's a little better look at this water separator. You can see that little ball there, hopefully. That is a float, so when this gets full of water, that ball floats, it tells you when to drain it. This is a drain on the bottom of it, and air simply comes in, goes down through and gets spun. That helps the water fall out into this, into this body here. Let me get it apart, get you a little better look at it. There's also a centered bronze filter in here. Now, I already had this thing completely apart and ultrasonic I gave it an ultrasonic bath because it was used. My I brought this down when he brought the compressor. I didn't have a decent separator, so I got basically one on my regulator, but this is secondary. There's the bronze centered filter. You can see how those veins just spin the air and it falls out into the into the vessel. Now I already changed the the O-rings on this, but I'm gonna put a little vacuum grease on all of them, take it back apart and uh, Put some, put some grease on them to help them seal a little better. That's pretty much it. It's my best understanding of this thing anyway. You can see that's just hollow. 
get on there. So obviously these things do need serviced and drained ever so often or they just won't do their job. Uh, this one, uh, the, uh, the holes in the little sight glass were completely full of gunk. Um, the sight glass itself had a lot of dirt and debris in it and the little ball was just stuck. You know, I went through and replaced all the O-rings as well. So, you know, there's nothing to break here, but there are parts that need to be kept clean and, uh, you know, for it to do its job like it should, right? So this is just some ultra thick, high vacuum grease. Works good for O-rings and stuff. Keeps them from leaking. Seems to help anyway. So we just cut that out with the bandsaw and I'm just cleaning up the edges with the with a rough file to give it a Nice look. So there's our quick and dirty bracket that'll be held to the wall with two Tapcon anchors. And uh, yeah, I just laid it all out by hand. There was nothing fancy here. Tapped the holes that were existing on the top of the top of the, the uh, separator here and punched some holes in it. I didn't actually this old Tony punch holes in it, but you get the idea. I drilled some holes in it with my drill press. I'll be so glad when all my machines are usable. They're so close right now. It makes work like this so much easier when you can set it up in a machine and actually get your holes exactly where they need to be. So that'll look good. Attach to the wall. So there's our pressure regulator that we're going to use. We've got to put our fittings on both the pressure regulator and the water separator. This has a water catch on it as well. Just two attempts to remove the water from the air before it gets in the line. So let's use our uh, liquid thread tape here. Made a quick bracket up the other day for the pressure regulator. Just throw that on the ground. So because this compressor is going to be outside, I want to add another shutoff valve as soon as it, this gets in the shop. Even though it ha already has a shutoff directly after the tank, I don't want to have to go outside in order to access that in case I want to service the pressure regulator or the water separator or modify the lines or, or who knows, the line could blow and it'd be nice to have a quick way inside the shop to you know, shut down the air. This is some pretty large airline and it could be probably pretty dramatic if one was to blow off or something. So I want a quick way to shut it off and that's what I'm gonna do because I've got the valve and I've got the fittings and I think it's a good idea. So another valve right after this one, as soon as it comes through the wall basically. So moving that press, I broke one of the small plastic return lines from the ram on it. Just brittle from where that thing had sat outside for so long. So we're going to have to change all the fluid in it, go over it, get it working again. If you remember when I showed it originally, it's got problems. So 
we're going to have to take some time once we get situated and go over that thing because I look forward to having the use of a big press like that. Well, there we go. That's going to work pretty well, I think. I'm going to wait for this line until the compressor's in place. But you get the idea. That's going to it's going to work out really nice. So that is looking pretty good and I'm excited that it's coming together like it is. Other than installing the compressor in my hose reel and maybe a downspout for a random plug-in, this system's pretty much done. And this three-quarter inch line is way more than what I really need in this shop. I don't run large impacts and stuff like that, but it's nice to have a system that if you was to need to do that, three-quarter inch drive, inch drive tools for big equipment work, this is more than capable to run that stuff from one end of the shop to the other. So the water separator and the pressure regulator easily changed in the future if your needs change, like you was going to start painting vehicles or something like that, which I don't plan to do. You would obviously want a really good water separation system. So this should serve my needs as far as this shop from now on, as far as I can tell. But you know, it's nice to have a system that you're not going to outgrow, at least as far as the airline. Kind of a pain to install, but once you've done it, it's in there, bud. You know, you don't ever have to mess with it again, and it's big enough to cover any needs that you're possibly going to have. That's a good thing. So let's quickly check our airline system in here to see if it's going to hold pressure. Um, Got my air compressor pumped up to about 120 pounds. I changed to a quick disconnect on this fitting here so I can plug my air hose from my compressor into this and it'll pressurize the loop. So I'm hoping that none of the fittings blow off and that it holds. So let's try it and uh, see what it does. So nothing blew off, that's good. Um, that holds quite a bit of air. That's a lot of line. I'm gonna turn the compressor on and bring it up to full pressure. So the whole air system is up to 175 PSI and I'm walking around with just soapy water, just some dishwashing liquid and water, spraying the fittings and looking for bubbles to appear to indicate a leak, right? I don't like an air system that leaks, but 
I have found one so far, and that is with my water separator here. And uh, I'm not sure why it leaks. Maybe I pinched the O-ring putting it together. Let me show you. So it's not a big leak, but it is a leak. I'll have to fix that. It's the only one I've found so far. So not bad, two leaks in the entire system. I just gotta fix the little uh, water separator and that's it. So here's something every shop should have. I just scored myself the most up-to-date McMaster catalog. I order from these guys all the time for my day job. And I use this magazine for research and for, as far as, uh, you know, components and stuff. And you can get a rough estimate of what the whole project that you're doing is going to cost. Now, I order some stuff from McMaster for myself. Some things are competitively priced on, but some things are high. you got to be careful and do your, do your research before you order. So even the old magazines... You know, it's still the same story. Great to have around simply to uh, to do parts research on. And the website is even better because you can get drawings and stuff, dimensions, all that good stuff for all your components almost. So get you a McMaster catalog, even if you don't buy from them. They're great. So I've been having some trouble with my Dayton 500-pound chain hoist, and the problem is that over the last year with the wall of this building being out, the chain ended up, I guess, getting damp and started, started to rust. And basically, anytime you lift, push the button and make this thing lift, it just raises the hook up. It doesn't slide through this block anymore. I mean, it does, but it's, there's so much rust and scale on the chain now that it just, it's a pain, let's just say that. So what I've decided to do is soak this entire chain in evaporust. It's, how else would you clean a chain, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully that will help and solve my problem. shouldn't hurt any of these components. There we go, we'll let that sit for a day or two. See how it turns out. So through the magic of editing, 24 hours has passed. And let's see how well it cleaned up this chain. Wow, this stuff, this stuff does a great job removing that rust and scale. So hopefully this thing will slide through the, through the block like it uh, did before, like it used to. I'm gonna pull it out of here and get it wiped off. Huh? No, it was completely covered in rust. You can see like, the like that. yeah. You can see the before and after. This stuff is awesome. So there's a little a little before and after. This was what was up in the actual hoist itself that didn't get cleaned. I have to run that, soak that in there. It just does a great job on this stuff. So I've got a new piece of equipment in the shop that I want to share with you, and sometimes it's the more the simpler pieces of equipment that make me the happiest. So 
Let me share it with you. I think you'll like it. So this is a do-all badged Wilton eight-speed gearhead drill press. It has a T-slotted table. You can run coolant on this machine because it is channeled and has a slot in the back for a, or for a coolant return. It is also T-slotted down at the foot. I have this exact same drill press at work and I really did. I fell in love with it years ago and always wanted this exact drill press. And my buddy Al stopped by and I wound up with this one. So let me show it to you a little closer. Man, I'm excited to have this thing. It's nice. So I know very little about this drill press. It was in a working shop when it was removed. I haven't heard it run. The table's in really good shape on it. It has a few peck marks on it and a couple holes, which you would expect from any old drill press. But look how big the table is for this thing. It rotates 360 degrees, the table itself, plus on its bracket, it rotates. Also, obviously, just like any other drill press, the table raises and lowers. You can swing the table completely out of the way if you have something that you want to attach to the foot of this thing. Plus, the head of this machine is also on a rack and pinion, so you can raise and lower the head on the column, and it also rotates 360 degrees. So. It's an amazing drill press, high and low range on the gearbox, gear driven, high and low on the switch and reverse. So just an awesome drill press. You can take the slop out of the column. It's just a, in my opinion, one of the better designed drill presses that you see out there. It's, it's better than most, that's for sure. Two stops that are settable, just nice. So to say the least, I'm extremely happy to have this machine. We're gonna to have to really go over it in detail, clean it all up. It needs a lot of love, but I don't see anything obviously wrong with it. But uh, I think it'll be some good content to go over this thing and clean it up, make it like it should be again. Well guys, that's it this week. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for. It's kind of been a short, busy week externally. For me, I did a lot of work on the siding and stuff on this shop and I didn't want to bore everybody to death with the same old, same old, but I still want to obviously get it done. And I'll show more of it once I get closer to the finishing stages because it's going to look really good. So I guess that's it. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers. And that's it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Waiting. For the sun to blossom